I am here at the National Federation of Community Broadcasters Conference in Houston, Texas, and I'm with Joseph Orozco. He's General Manager and Program Director at KIDE-FM in Hoopa, California, which is about seven hours north of San Francisco. Hi, Joseph. Hello, hello. It's great to meet you here. Thank you. So why don't you talk a little bit about the state of native radio today? The state of native radio today is, oh, it, it, it's, it's like a... We've been around since 1972, a lot of the stations, and some of the stations are still coming on the air. I, I think we're still infants. Wow. Because we're probably the last group of people in the country to actually have radio. <laughs> Isn't that ironic? The last yeah. group in the country. Yeah, we, we always seem to be the last. When it comes to getting federal stuff, we either get the surplus. Uh, so anyway, so we have this, this vehicle this media vehicle, which is very important, very powerful, and the state of it is is undeveloped. Mm. And, and I take a look at Latin America. I take a look at the struggles that they have gone through, and they're still going through. How some people have been assassinated because they, they take a, a stand. But you don't see that in American Indian radio. We haven't taken a stand. Why not? Because of capitalism because of colonialization, mm -hmm. because it was a completely different ball game. You know, they, Latin America, South America, they, they did things a little bit different than the American foref forefathers did. And in that process, I think the, the forefathers are really smart in what they did in order to maintain a capitalistic stand. Mm -hmm. Even Roosevelt was very smart in, in the New Deal to make sure that capitalism maintained is a steady hold. And so that's what we're suffering as Native people in America, is this onset of capitalism, and there's no way we can get out of it. Mm. We can't stop it. So we have to think of a different way to understand it, what its effects are to us. And media is the cornerstone mm -hmm. to it. And because media is a cornerstone to it, we don't get the assistance to help us generate this knowledge. And so some stations are really good. They have some great music shows, and they do some great powwow stuff, and they do a lot of language programs, which is important. But we don't deal that deeply in politics, hmm. even on a local level. So even at the tribal level, even at the tribal you don't level, really discuss politics? Because all of the, again, all of the FCC, NPR, Corporation for Public Broadcasting, anybody who receives federal dollars because of the way this whole system was set up with treaties and understanding, well, we have to have a group of people to talk with to sign this paper. So we will recognize this body of people, the Tribal Council. You'd look at the FCC when you're talking about broadband and, and uh, services to Indian country. Mm -hmm. If there is a tribal government or an entity of a tribal government, they can apply. But tribes are sovereign nations. And because we're sovereign nations, we have the right and capacity to identify another nonprofit group of our own acknowledgement who may not be a tribal affiliate. They're just like, it, 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 it's like the uh, county board of supervisors mm -hmm. or the city council. Well, they don't have a radio station, so they don't have licenses of themselves. Right. But the communities of which they sanction, or the community groups that they sanction, they have the ability to go after them, those licenses. But in the Indian country, the federal government says, no, it's the tribal council. We want the tribal council as a tribal entity. Mm. So that, that that's another way to keep the thumb down. Keep the thumb down. Elaborate a little bit more about capitalism. I don't think people realize just how deep it has affected groups like Native Americans. You often hear that sort of, oh, get over it. Uh, there's so many opportunities here. Look at all the people who came here and made something of themselves. Mm -hmm. So at whose I expense? Address that, yeah. At whose expense? Right. You got eight, 88 million acres of land that has been taken away. What, what I love, I don't know if you've ever seen the, the uh, Indian Country Today magazine mm -hmm. or the newspaper, and one of the ongoing little ribbons that they have at the bottom is they have Indian Country in 1492, and that's all in red. Indian Country today, and it's got little speckles of red. Mm. That's what happened. 
That's the 88 million acres that we no longer have control over. So actually, there never was a revolution that happened in America. America was not built on a revolution. The only thing that changed was who is in control. And so what they did is they took the same old process that the kings were using, the monarchs and the whole other system, and they just put the crowns on themselves. And they, and they, and they claimed all the land, as much as the land, and I guess they had enough. I don't know. Because they couldn't wipe it out all the Indians. Right. Because Almost all of us. They, yeah. They, I mean, they it, did a well, good job. Well, of they it. did. I mean, we were just talking earlier about how people don't know about the history of California Indians. Well, the history where, of California where we both is live. really worse. Yeah. I mean, if you, like my family was in Ukiah, Northern California, and the only reason why they survived is because they weren't near gold country. Correct. So if you were, lived near gold country, you're gone. You're gone. Well, is she? Right. The last of the, his tribe. Because everybody else is gone. So when we're talking about native media, we also talked about NPR doing the story about rape on reservations. Diane Sawyer went to the Rosebud tribe a year ago or so. Just about a year. About a year ago. Talked about poverty and alcoholism. Mm -hmm. It's always negative. Always negative. What What are the stories you want to tell? The stories we want to tell is uh, the, sto the stories of our success. We want to hear, just like everybody else wants to hear, how well we're doing. And we want to share that. Because people will connect with people that they feel are doing good and they'll honor those people they'll have a re different respect you don't have you don't have that much of a respect if you if you're if you feel if you get this image that you're really downtrodden and you're really lower class mm -hmm. no, no one no one wants to associate with you mm -hmm. and so they, they feel good about themselves being able to say well look at those people so we always become those people right. but even those people are our people so we have to say, how do we help these people? Or how can we, or the better question is, to what extent is it our, our fault that they're in the position that they're in? Mm -hmm, exactly. What role do we play in the downtrodden? Right. And that's a question nobody likes it. Oh yeah, uh, you barely even hear the word poverty mentioned. I mean, it's getting better because of Occupy, but for the most part. This, I, I'll be interested to see if these presidential candidates even use the word poverty. Oh, sure. Right, instead of middle class. What about the, the reservations in Hoopa? What do you hear from the people in terms of what they want from your station and the media? What they would like to have, uh, I wish we can give it to them, is, is uh, they want to know what's happening. Yeah. They always say they want the news and everything. Oh, gee, we know not journalists. No, 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 they want journalists. They just want to know, why did the tribal council travel? What is, how come the department is doing this? How come the fisheries is doing that? How come the how come they're putting in new new pumps over here? They just want to know what's happening, and they want to have this avenue where they can put in their opinions or at least be asked. Uh, there's this whole issue of uh, of the settlement that we've got for uh, mis uh, misappropriations of some of our funds or resources. 100 years ago, so we're going to get $49.2 million. It's on paper right now, but it, it will come. We know it will happen. Mm -hmm. And right now, the sitting council is already saying, well, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. And people got upset, really upwards. So, Wait a minute, you didn't talk it over with us. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to petition, and we want the whole thing. And we'll divide it up equally. $16,000 a person. Wait a minute, that's not a good idea. But they made the point is that at least give us a voice at the table. Right. And well, that, that's, that's it. G give us a voice. Yeah. yeah. Well, and also I encourage you to check out K-I-D-E-F-M, and you can find things like California Indian Radio Project. I really want to hear this documentary, Dying for Water, Indians, Politics, and Dead Fish in the Klamath River Basin. And so we can find these on your website? Yes, you can. Okay, great. And again, it's K-I-D-E-F-M dot org. And I will put a link on our right under the video, Medicine Trails, A Life in Many Worlds. Oh, then this is a great book, The Militarization of Indian Country by Winona LaDuke. Well, I hope we can work together. It's great to meet you. Nice meeting you. Joseph Orozco is program manager at KIDE-FM in Hoopa, California, and we are at the National Federation of Community Broadcasters Conference in Houston. Thank you, Joseph. Thank you.